With the state of the Dragon Ball Super manga and Frieza's brand new power up pretty much going viral on the internet, I figured that there was absolutely no better time than now to make a video on what if Naruto had Frieza's potential. And so I decided to sit in a chair in my setup for the next six hours and make this video that's probably going to be less than an hour. So yeah, enjoy. Hey Ross, sauce it up. We're going to start our story off in a very, very familiar place, the swing. Now, Naruto would essentially be outside on the swing, right? Naruto's simply just kicking at the air, you know, pretty much picking up dust when suddenly Iruka and everybody else would come outside. Naruto just got kicked out of the class for being a goofball. And now that he's outside, he ends up rejoining back with the class, right? We see Ruka look towards the direction of Naruto, then look down at the paper and just bay, be like, okay, whatever, Sasuke and Naruto. Up to the front, please. Both of them immediately go up there, right? We see this situation where Sasuke just like smugly walks up. Naruto begins to immediately start getting grouchy, being all like, oh, I'm going to wipe that smile off your face. You know what I mean? And at this point, Naruto has no powers because Naruto, keep in mind, has Frieza's potential. He's not part of Frieza's race, but it's going to be a huge plot hole later on that I don't feel like covering up. But I'm just going to mention now, huge plot hole upcoming later. OK, but. Anyways, though, regardless of that said facts, Naruto walks over towards Sasuke and they both immediately go on to form the symbol that pretty much symbolizes that they're about to have a clean, fair match. They go on to start fighting and Naruto gets his butt handed to him. I'm just going to say it like that. Naruto gets absolutely folded by Sasuke in the matter of like 10 seconds. Once Naruto's on the ground, he looks up to see Sakura just cheering for Sasuke and this strikes a nerve. Now. It strikes a nerve within Naruto's core that hits different. Like, let, let me put it for you guys like this. Imagine, right? Imagine your school crush when you were like in third grade is, you know, you're, you're, you're in this race. Everybody remembers that back in the day, pretty much being the fastest kid in school meant that you were the coolest and you were like, not really that fast, but you did your best, right? And your crush was the girl that just so happened to like the fastest kid. Right. So you pretty much are really determined to beat him. Right. You run in guns blazing. You start really, really good. You get a head start. But then the popular kid, he finally starts trying. He immediately beats you and wipes the floor with you, leaving you in his dust. And suddenly you see the girl that you like go up to him and begin to immediately start being all over him and, you know, being smiling and stuff. And you're just sitting there pretty much getting laughed at and ridiculed by everybody. While the girl who you like literally looks to you and says, yeah, you had no chance in the first place, right? That's literally what just happened in Naruto, except in a different way, seeing as our worlds are two different things. You know, what would happen in our world would be something more or less what I just described. And then what happens to him is even worse, actually. But basically, Naruto goes on to essentially get extremely salty, right? He gets very mad at the fact that Sasuke just beat him. And so Naruto decides to essentially begin pushing out cranking push-ups out sit-ups running squats and all that stuff for about let's say uh two weeks right he trains for about two weeks and after naruto trains this is about to be pretty funny but after naruto trains the dude comes back even stronger than sasuke and what would end up happening after this is that naruto goes on to pretty much remain the top dog in the classroom for a while right now th picture this right picture this you just smoked this kid in a race he was so slow and suddenly he comes back about two weeks later and completely annihilates you the next time that they ended up fighting which was two weeks later naruto ended up pretty much speed blitzing sasuke and punching him into the ground basically hitting him out of bounds and making everybody be like what he won people would immediately be silent and then suddenly somebody would say well doesn't that make him the strongest and suddenly everybody just kind of starts flipping the script and instead of being like all fangirly over sasuke while the majority of the girls were the boys were like yo he's the new strongest 
Yeah, everybody just kind of starts realizing this and suddenly Naruto becomes the new top dog of the classroom. While Sasuke pretty much goes on to get angry at this and start training even harder than he had ever trained before, trying to get ahead of Naruto. But Naruto, since he only trained two weeks and they're barely Genins, with that small amount of training, Naruto was able to remain the top dog for pretty much the entirety of the next two years, until eventually it made it to the point when they were finally about to graduate and there was little over two months left right naruto during this time is kind of just having the time of his life and suddenly he would get paired up with sasuke once again where sasuke would challenge him and actually end up destroying naruto showing that naruto definitely slacked off a little bit too much and it's at this moment that he kind of ends up realizing that if he doesn't train a lot harder then he's going to be left behind by sasuke again so what does naruto do he goes back to training once again and comes back a lot stronger than normal he actually ended up training for a little over a month and then he ends up actually challenging sasuke where he goes on to destroy him showing that he's definitely joni level at the very least obliterating sasuke was just a the beginning of what naruto's power was going to grow to and after this naruto kind of slowly begins realizing that his potential is insane he realized that after just one month of training naruto was able to get even stronger than sasuke and probably even stronger than a lot of tuning which is what you know iruka sensei told him himself naruto would slowly realize he could probably become kage early if he trained even harder and so he trains every day until the academy students finally graduate so he trains for about four more weeks getting absurdly powerful very very fast and eventually after this he ends up pretty much going over to Hiruzen's office basically two days before the graduation thing would happen right Right? And what basically ends up happening is essentially Naruto barges into his office, right? Being like, hey, Hiruzen, old man, I'm here to challenge you for your Kage position. If I win, you got to let me become Hokage. And Hiruzen just looks at Naruto and says, all right, whatever, Naruto. And as this happens, the, the Ombu that are pretty much hidden, like upstairs, like that are like just, you know, on the wall being hidden and stuff like that. You know, Naruto looks at Hiruzen and he's like, wait, so are you not going to get up and fight me? And Hiruzen just looks at him and says come on naruto charge me with everything you have naruto says all right then hiruzen you ask for it as he blitzes even faster than the jonins could have reacted and naruto punches hiruzen through the hokage office into the training area where he jumps on there and hiruzen looks to naruto stunned because that hurt and not a little bit like that hurt hurt have you guys ever been fighting like with your sibling or your son or anything like that right I'm not saying the sun one for me, but have you guys seen that one video where the kid was boxing and, you know, like he ends up uppercutting his dad because he was like taking it easy on him. Basically, that's what happened. Hiruza was taking it easy on him and he ended up getting hit way harder than he expected. Like, it's like when you tell your brother to hit you or something like that and they hit you and bam, like it actually hurts and you're like, mm, and you actually end up getting angry and like wanting to hit them back harder. But then you realize if you do that, you're kind of screwed. That's basically what just happened to Hiruza. Now, Hiruza looks to Naruto shocked being like, yo, how did you get this strong and naruto says enough talk as he rushes in and tries to begin to begin throwing punches at Hiruzen. now as the battle is progressing naruto is getting stronger as time goes on and Hiruzen is just getting absolutely flabbergasted by how powerful naruto truly is his speed and strength alone are making him keep up with a kage level combatant naruto at this point in the story is literally stated to or sorry, Hiruzen is stated to literally be the god of Shinobi. And Naruto being able to decimate the Kage just like this is absurd. It's cr it's ludicrous, basically, is what I'm trying to get at, right? Now, Naruto would actually end up besting, or almost besting Hiruzen, after Hiruzen pretty much had to put out everything he had to barely be able to dodge one of Naruto's powerful attacks and win by outsmarting him. Not even by out like strengthening him but literally just outsmarting him right with uh genjutsu that hiruza never thought he would have to pull out on a kid but naruto ends up breaking out of it and asking if he won hiruza goes on to explain that he didn't win but that his power is incredible asking naruto how in the world he grew this strong naruto states that he just trained and hiruza asks how long he's been training for Naruto said, mm, about three months, I think. That's as long as I've trained in my entire life. Hiruzen looks at Naruto like with his mouth agape and is just like, no way. 
Naruto boy, if this is true, your potential is the greatest in all of history. If you were to train every day for a year, who knows how powerful you could potentially become? And Naruto just looks towards the direction of Haruzen and goes, yeah, I probably could become pretty strong, right? Haruzen looks at him and says, you have no idea. And Naruto then goes on to look towards the direction of Haruzen and say, so if I become even stronger and I finally beat you in combat next time, I'll become Kage, right? Hiruzen then sits Naruto down and then tells him that regardless of how strong he is, and he says that he's definitely the strongest ninja in the village, apart from himself, and maybe another ninja who he's thinking of, which is like Mike Guy and Kakashi, then you probably could become Kage. Hiruzen then goes on to tell him that the only thing that's stopping him now is his age and his wisdom, saying that even though Naruto is incredibly powerful, Naruto still isn't experienced enough to lead an entire village saying that even though he is powerful he would probably lead the village into the dirt and naruto after hearing this would end up saying yeah yeah whatever old man i guess i'll go on some missions to get some experience as naruto then goes back to the academy and is essentially assigned to team seven where naruto just goes on to go on easy missions for about two weeks which are all d ranks that naruto honestly thinks are absurd he thinks that these missions are literally beneath him seeing as naruto is pretty much around the level of kakashi's you know strength and he would have definitely proven that in the bell test because the way that the bell test would have gone this time around is after the introductions and once they actually went to said bell test area naruto would have quite literally looked to kakashi and told him He's going to take those bells whether he has that book out or not. And so Naruto just blitzes at Kakashi and grabs one of the bells. And Kakashi is shocked because he was holding a book, right? He was not even thinking that anybody was going to be this fast. But Naruto then proceeded to lunge back and Kakashi threw his book away as he, you know, revealed the Sharingan and then begins to move as fast as he can to barely be able to keep up with Naruto. Now, keep in mind, Naruto is just using kunais at this moment and is just like swinging them like crazy. While Kakashi's having to use his intelligence to dodge and his, you know, his, um perception of things with the Sharingan to even keep up with Naruto just think about how incredibly insane that is like Kakashi is trying his absolute hardest to keep up with a 12 year old kid who just turned 12 mind you and Naruto's barely even trying right now Naruto is doing his absolute best and at this point and now Kakashi is sweating and Sasuke and Sakura are both watching this just thinking ain't no way I heard that this Jonin was like one of the strongest in the village and Naruto is handling this man with ease Sasuke gets extremely jealous wondering why he doesn't get as strong as Naruto does as fast and pretty much begins to kind of get emo-ish again or not again, but more specifically, just kind of have a little bit of a BF, which stands for B-I-T-C-H fit. Now, you might be wondering, yo, Zether, why didn't you just say the word? It, it, it's because I don't want to get a, you know, a, a yellow check mark on my video. That said, anyway, so basically what ends up happening following this little situation is we essentially have this situation where Naruto just molly wobs Kagashi, absolutely destroying him off screen, and then suddenly reappearing back when they suddenly end up meeting Tazuna, the bridge builder. Now, when Tazuna enters the building and begins to essentially begin to berate Naruto and call him names and stuff like that, Naruto looks at him and then says you insolent fool how dare you talk to me like that suddenly naruto feels a little bit of a tingly sensation in his tongue and he's like whoa that felt great talking down to people feels incredible naruto's racism is finally gonna kick in out of nowhere <laughs> and this is gonna give me a perfect excuse to just start saying a bunch of random things actually no i'll, I'll probably still get canceled just kidding you can't cancel somebody who doesn't care so i'm gonna do it Anyways, though, so basically what ends up happening is Naruto looks towards the direction of Tazuna and tells him that if he doesn't get out of here, he is going to kick him out. Now, Tazuna then goes on to be like, eh, 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 dumb kid, you don't know what you're talking about. And Naruto just flares his aura, begins to essentially tap his shoulder, similar to what Toby Rama did, flaring out his chakra, causing Tazuna to get terrified, making the atmosphere in the room visibly begin to shake as Tazuna is like, yeah, no, I, I, I kind of... I was just playing, bro. I, I'm going to leave. You, you got this, this one. I'm, I'm going to let you have this one, right? 
Now Naruto looks back to Tazuna and is like, yeah, damn right. Suddenly, we have this situation where Naruto and the team finally find themselves at the village gates, and it's at this moment that Naruto kind of just begins to embark on this mission. Now, at the moment that the Demon Brothers would lunge towards the direction of Team 7 for their original ambush attack, this does not go whatsoever how they thought that things were going to go down, because their plan was essentially to rush and kill the Jonin and then just kill the bridge builder. But no, Naruto saw this coming in slow motion almost and pretty much blitzed at both of them punching holes straight through their stomachs as he took it out and then looked at them and said pitiful you worthless creatures as he then looks off towards the direction of kakashi who hid in the tree after substituting and then says get out now kakashi we we might as well keep going on this mission suddenly zabuza arrives right and kakashi and zabuza end up fighting just like they would have in the original now of course kakashi gets caught off guard by zabuza's you know training or sorry, water prison jutsu. And once this happens, Naruto just sighs and is like, whatever, I guess I have to save him. Before he then suddenly goes on to essentially look towards the direction of Kakashi and tell him, look, I'll save you just this once. As he pretty much just lunges at the direction of Zabuza and in, in an instant, in an instant robs Zabuza of his sword, right? He begins to slightly levitate off the ground and it's at this moment that Naruto realizes that he can actually fly. So Naruto looks at Zabuza and smiles as he holds this sword and just cuts Zabuza in half. Now at this moment, the screen goes black and suddenly Haku rushes in bloodlusted wanting to kill Naruto for taking away everything that Haku loved, but Naruto looks towards the direction of Haku and says, no you. Pretty much Tur opens one hand out and through a move that he had pretty much been developing since he started training, would just shoot his chakra out in pure chakra like form, which kind of resembles a key blast and he just shoots it at, at, at Haku who just dies like Haku just gets obliterated by this beam now once Kakashi like lands and he kind of recuperates himself and he realizes that Naruto just killed everybody before him he's like how did you like two weeks ago me and you were like basically on the same level uh, and, and then Naruto looks at Kakashi and goes oh right I trained for two weeks and Kakashi's like oh oh Minato, you created a demon. Like, what are you doing, bro? Minato, what are your genes? Naruto just looks at Kakashi and says, all right, continue on with the mission. And eventually the mission is pretty much complete, leading to the village, or not village, but the team to essentially return back to Kanoha, where they're then informed by Kakashi of the tuning exams. And it's at this moment that the Naruto timeline and events slightly begin to alter a bit. Because nowadays, Naruto is present for the fight against Rock Lee. And when Rock Lee sees Naruto, seeing as Naruto was the one that handled both of them, it definitely came back to the village. Lee asked Naruto to fight him. And Lee ended up fighting Naruto, right? Now, Naruto this time around ends up pretty much molly whopping Lee. And Lee just pounds the ground and asks why it is that he beat him, even though he trains every single day nonstop for hours. Lee then is pretty much hit over the top of the head by Guy Sensei as he tells him, Lee, it's because he has raw talent, Lee. That just means you have to work a hundred times harder. And Lee gets fired up, raises his fist, and is like, yeah, you're right, Guy Sensei. I'm going to train 50 times harder. And suddenly, we see like Guy and Lee walk off like with these embers shooting off of them in a visible aura as Naruto thinks about what Lee just said. Like, Naruto has all the potential of the world, but Lee could potentially one day catch up if he trains hard enough. Suddenly, Naruto gets the same lesson that Kakashi learned at a young age as well, and now Naruto doesn't actually skip training whatsoever. Yeah, he takes it easy a couple of days, but at the very least, every day, he does at least one hour of training hand-to-hand -hand combat and even training with a sword. Not only that, but training on developing new powerful moves and even working on his flight pattern, which he already mastered. That said, eventually the test would come come around and Naruto eventually aces it, right? And by aces it, I mean he leaves the, the sheet blank because potential doesn't make you smarter, right? So he just leaves the page blank and essentially ends up passing just by not giving up, right? Then we end up having them in the forest of death where they eventually get encountered by Orochimaru. And when Orochimaru arrives, something extremely funny happens here, right? 
Now, keep in mind, Naruto still has to go off and take a leak, and Sasuke and Sakura are just sitting there, you know what I mean? Like, they get encountered by some random Geni. Eventually, Orochimaru reveals that he's, you know, a lot stronger than they thought, and when Sasuke eventually ends up running away with Sakura by stabbing himself in the leg and moving them out of the way of a dangerous attack, Naruto jumps right on time and looks to Orochimaru as he tells him to leave them alone. Orochimaru looks back to Naruto and begins to visibly begin like laughing out loud. And when Naruto sees this, he's just like, did you just laugh at me? Orochimaru looks at him and says, what's a 13 year old Genin gonna do to me? As suddenly Naruto's like, nah, nah, I'm, I'm done. And in Frieza versus Gas like fashion, Naruto just blitzes at him and rips a hole through his stomach with his fist. Orochimaru coughs blood all over Naruto's face and Naruto then uppercuts him, sending his head flying off of his entire body as Orochimaru didn't even get the chance to regurgitate. Suddenly Sasuke and Sakura come out of the corner as they're like, uh, uh, bro, how? And, and Naruto just looks at Sasuke and is like, I don't know, bro. I'm just, I'm just doing what it, you know, what I think is best. I defeated the villain, so can we go now? And Sasuke just looks at Naruto and is like, All right, bro. Look, you, you got it, big dog. Let's go. Let's go. Let, let, let's me and you go off to the tower. They eventually make their way towards the Genning Tower, and it's at this moment where Naruto would end up meeting Kakashi and Iruka Sensei once again, and essentially going on to take the preliminaries, fighting off against Kiba. Now, I'm not even going to sit here and be like, okay, so this, 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 and this happens, because Kiba just gets one-shotted. Like, really think about this. Naruto arrives, bam, just one-shotted, and then we switch scenes to Kiba on the ground with like a, a bump on his head, you guys know, like in stereotypical anime fashion and Naruto just walking towards the stadium you know with Hinata offering him an ointment him you know being like oh thanks Hinata and just walking off and then you know thinking to himself that you know that girl is quite nice to him she's always been nice to him before suddenly essentially going on to meet Jiraiya after the one month training time skip would happen and during the time that he actually meets Jiraiya Naruto just kind of is able to be himself instead of focusing on training is just focused on hanging out with Jiraiya and realizing that Jiraiya is a cool dude even though he's a pervy sage Jiraiya is funny honestly and some of Jiraiya's personality would rub off on Naruto but it's at this current moment that once Naruto finishes his hangout session with Jiraiya he essentially goes on to finish taking the tune-in exams and he ends up pretty much wiping the floor with Neji where he wonders to himself why why he's obeying all these rules from the village if he's already probably stronger than Hiruzen himself? Why does he even have to take this test that it's more of just a, um, a formality and that Naruto should just be handed the position of Kage? I mean, what's the worst thing that could happen if Naruto became Kage? It's the strongest person in the village, right? That's who, should, that's who the Kage leadership should go to. Naruto has these thoughts go into his head very, very early on, and suddenly, once Naruto pretty much beats Neji, he just sits at the top waiting for the rest of the tuning exams to go forth. Now, eventually the attack would happen after Sasuke and Gaara's fight, and when Naruto fights against Gaara this time around, instead of wasting time and like fighting him and summoning Gamabunta, when Gaara transforms into his gigantic Jinchuriki state, Naruto flies into the air, holds one finger up, and immediately begins charging a gigantic chakra ball of pure energy of just destruction and chaos and flicks his finger down to completely eradicate any trace of Garda that was left. Tamari and Konkuro arrive and basically just look as they see the ashes of their once little brother just burn out. Tamari looks towards the direction of Naruto as she looks at him and says, you're a monster. And Naruto looks at Tamari and says, call me whatever you want, but I get missions done. Suddenly, he goes back to the village to find Hiruzen and Orochimaru facing off because yes, Orochimaru obviously came back. He always does. And Naruto just, you know, arrives only to see Naruto, Orochimaru, and um, Hiruzen struggling, right? Once he sees this and he sees the barrier, Naruto's like, "I." Right, get out of my way as he pretty much like just punches at the barrier and it shatters like it just gets destroyed all the sound four members just get flung away and Naruto rushes into Hiruzen asking him if he needs some help Hiruzen would then look towards Naruto and say yeah I do Naruto and Orochimaru and Hiruzen would be in this tug of war situation 
Naruto looks to Orochimaru and says, yeah, I think it's time for you to die, little Orochimaru, as he suddenly goes on to pretty much begin grabbing Orochimaru and just pretty much hitting him, punching him in the face back and forth. Orochimaru is getting weakened and his will to, you know, overpower Orochimaru begins to pretty much start corroding. As Orochimaru's entire soul gets ripped into the belly stomach of the Reaper, the belly stomach, <laughs> the Reaper stomach, as, you know, Orochimaru just gets GG. The dude Orochimaru, you know, he's gone. There, there's no more Orochimaru. He's not coming back this time because even though last time he's been killed, his soul hasn't been killed, right? And it's like his soul is the thing that's able to just be transferred from body to body. But this time around, there was nothing. So basically what happens is Naruto just helps defeat Orochimaru. And after this, he looks to Hiruzen and asks him if he can become Kage now. Hiruzen looks to Naruto and says that it's not yet time for Naruto to become Kage. And Naruto looks to Hiruzen before saying, what a shame. Then I guess I'll just have to take that position of power from you. As he looks to Hiruzen and says, bye bye Hiruzen. He suddenly shoots a key blast. Oh my God, I, I let it slip. Yep, keep, okay, whatever. Every time, yeah, well, I don't care. I'm just giving him his powers now at this point. Potential powers, yada yada, same thing, okay? This is the plot hole that I was talking about in the beginning, okay? Live with it. So Naruto shoots a key blast at the direction of Hiruzen, right? And completely eradicates Hiruzen, mind you. As he then jumps down and all of the Joni that were there present look at Naruto and eventually begin like taking their swords out, their kunais out, you know, holding out jutsu hand signs as Naruto says, funny, I didn't think I was gonna have to handle the fodder after doing that. But he simply steps one foot down as he then says, ah, you know, he begins charging his aura and everybody just gets flung back. My guy and Kakashi are the only two people powerful enough to stand in Naruto's way since Jiraiya is not at the village presently, and they both get Maliwa. Now, the battle between Eight Gates Guy and Naruto is actually an interesting one that would actually push Naruto to his limits, and that would happen after Naruto kills Kakashi, just because I see this battle going down something like you know, obviously Kakai and Mike Guy both start off. You know, they both, you know, Kakashi shows off a Sharingan. Guy, you know, taps into like the fifth gate. They rush in and they immediately begin fighting against Naruto. Naruto has a bit of a hard time fighting against the both of them. So Naruto just decides to shoot a bunch of energy beams at the direction of Kakashi, piercing his heart, leading to Guy like sitting there and being like, No, my eternal rival of youth. And suddenly just kind of looking towards the direction of Naruto before being like, I will never forgive you. You know what I mean? And then Naruto just looks towards the direction of Guy and is like, I don't care, bro. Move. He flicks Guy away and Guy just gets up slamming his fist at the ground before looking to Lee who's right beside him and telling him that the time of youth is done for him. He pokes at his heart and immediately taps into the eighth gate as he looks towards the direction of Naruto and says that this is his final act. As he rushes in and uses his dragon kick, right? Lunging in with that attack, Naruto gets actually kind of terrified and he actually does get hit with it, but his durability is just insane. I mean, Frieza was able to survive the spirit bomb, so I'm saying Naruto could survive this, right? Once this happens, Guy thinks he won and everybody begins cheering, right? And suddenly, Naruto like, just peeks up from the crater and goes, I almost died, you bastard, as he shoots a key blast at Guy and just kills him and suddenly looks towards the direction of you know, the rest of the village as he leaps up into the air and says, you know, I could wipe each and I could wipe this entire village from the map or you all swear your allegiance to me and get to live another day. He shoots up this gigantic ball of energy slash chakra that he's able to create because I mean, I know I've been calling it key, but basically since Naruto has insane potential, he was able to develop attacks similar to key in, in their essence, which aren't key, but you know, it's very, very similar. And it's just these energy orbs, like where it sucks a lot of chakra out of him, but it's worth it because the devastation that these attacks cause is just incredible. Think of what Naruto just charges up in his finger, basically like a biju bomb that he's basically able to like make uh, from his finger and stuff like that. And um, yeah, Naruto uses that and pretty much the entire village just gets down on one knee and swears allegiance, right? After this, Naruto just goes on to create a throne room and begins to pretty much lead this village and make everybody train even harder than before, making everybody's lives kind of miserable for about a month. 
actually not, not about a month. Let's say for about a week, suddenly Jiraiya returns and, uh, excuse me, but I, 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 I had to go get some water and basically, um, what's it called? Rush towards the room where Naruto is currently residing, in, right? He lunges at Naruto and asks him why he did all this, you know, why it killed Hiruzen. And Naruto said that that old man didn't want to give the village over to him. So he took it forcefully. Jiraiya, after hearing this, just goes and says, that's the most idiotic thing you've ever done, Naruto. How could you do something like that, right? And Naruto just looks to Jiraiya before saying he's not going to do anything about it, telling him to join him or die like the rest of them. And Jiraiya just closes his eyes, summons Mom Pa, activates Sage Mode, and Naruto now learns about Sage Mode, right? Once Naruto learns about this, he actually ends up defeating Jiraiya and just rushing off to, you know, Mount Miyaboku, where he's pretty much told that they're not going to teach him. And since Naruto's told that they don't want to teach him, he decides, all right, whatever, I'll find other sage creatures. Eventually going off to train with the snake sage mode people, which is even better than toad sage mode, and then gets even more OP because he trained even longer. And this time he decides to recruit the Akatsuki after everything was all said and done. And he pretty much just goes off to with the Akatsuki group in, in hand, just go and take over other villages. He literally a 13 year, keep in mind, 13 year old boy goes to other nations with the terrorist group, the Akatsuki, and literally takes them over in an entire day. Some of the Akatsuki members would lose their lives in these battles, but Naruto is just so OP that it doesn't matter. The Akatsuki is basically his henchman, and Obito wasn't about to go through with being one of Naruto's underlings, so Naruto had to kill him. He had to kill the head of the snake. Naruto kept Sasuke alive, so Itachi just did what he was told, and even though, you know, he wasn't happy, but the village was at least alive. Knowing that he could not do a thing to stop uh, Naruto, he decided to just go along with it, right? And basically what ends up happening is Naruto just goes on to essentially take over the entirety of every other village that pretty much exists and conquering the entirety of planet Earth. Now, after he conquers Earth, pretty much one random day about like 20 something years later ends up coming around or not, not 20 something years later, but when uh, Naruto was a father to Boruto and stuff like that, and Momoshiki arrives to Earth and the Otsutsuki finally reveal themselves, Naruto pretty much goes off to kill Momoshiki and after realize that space travel is possible. He would pretty much try it by sending a shadow clone to space to see if it comes back alive and Naruto would be shocked to find out that he could breathe in space. Naruto doesn't die in space. So what does Naruto decide to do next? He leaves the Shadow Clone back on Earth to pretty much make sure that that place is safe and then goes off to conquer space, starting with the planet of the Otsutsutsuki, where Naruto goes off to essentially destroy it and then train for 10 more years, going even growing even more powerful, going on to destroy planet after planet, recruiting aliens, creating a space empire. And yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that pretty much wraps up what if Naruto had Frieza's potential. I know midway through the video, it pretty much ended up becoming what if Frieza was in Naruto, but I had a ton of fun making this video and it wasn't really one of those videos that I like to think about too hard. It was more or less just one of those messing around videos that was just funny in essence and I just had a ton of fun creating this video in general. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to slap the like button and also let me know what your favorite part of the video was. But with that, I'll add the way it has been your boy zether and i love each and every single one of you guys peace